Okay, now we move into the part of the playlist that most students feel represents algebra the, the most, solving the equations. Now, the problem with this section, so to speak, the ACT solving equations is that you can see some of this stuff in Algebra 1 and then you can see some of this stuff in Algebra 2. So it kind of it kind of is hard to tell where Algebra 1 stops and one Algebra 1 starts up again. So think of solving equations as just a general algebra topic, not so much Algebra 1 or Algebra 2. However, as the ACT classifies its skills, solving linear equations is a skill that is kind of related to elementary algebra or what we would consider Algebra 1 from a teaching standpoint. So these problems represent your generic solving equation type questions. The degree of difficulty uh, is not extremely difficult, um, but it is what you would normally see in the first 20 to 30 questions on the ACT. So let's jump in here and take a look at some. Okay, so if we look at this first question, question, it says 2x plus 3 equals 8x minus 5, then x equals. Well, that's ultimately what you're trying to do. You're trying to find what x equals. So this is just your standard textbook question from Algebra 1. You just need to solve from x. Now, to be able to do this, you need to know your properties that allow you to move things around. Now, you don't have to know these properties by name. You just know, need to know how to use them. Now, whether you do some of these steps in your head or you actually write them out doesn't matter because as we've said on other videos, the ACT is just looking for the correct score. They're not checking your work. So for instance, I might decide to subtract 2x from both sides and that's going to cancel out on one side. That doesn't, if you can do that in your head, that's perfectly acceptable. So for instance, the next step would be for me to add 5 to both sides. Well, if I add 5 to both sides, I'm going to end up equaling 6x equals to 8. Now, lastly, we need to divide both sides by 6, and we get 8 over 6. And I've done all of my steps correct. Now, here's a very common ACT issue that you need to be aware of. You get an answer, and that answer is nowhere to be found in the answer choices. So, a couple things you need to be aware of. First, can 8 over 6 be simplified? Well, it can. It can be simplified to 4 over 3, which would make answer choice E the correct answer. The other thing that you're going to want to look for is in more difficult problems, say Algebra 2 type based problems, you may have the correct answer, but you will want to put your answer in a different format. So maybe the answer choices are not formatted the way you have finished your problem. So that's definitely something you're going to want to look for. Okay, so this next question is definitely a typical ACT kind of curveball question. They say 5x plus 3 equals 23. And you look at that and you're like, oh, okay, that's easy. I'm just going to solve this. But then they say, what does 12x minus 10 equal? So the whole intent here is to actually solve for x and then use it to figure out what that expression equals to. So let's see how that plays out. Now, here's the thing that you need to be careful of. You can see that in solving for the equation, we got x equals to 4. And of course, in the answer choices, answer choice C is 4. But you got to be careful. This is a trick on the ACT's part. This is what we would call a multi-step problem or, or a partial answer. 4 is a good number that you need to use to solve the final for the final answer but it's not the answer but they will put those as bait in there so now what we need to do is we need to take 12x minus 10 and we need to put that 4 in place of x and when we do we get 38 which would be answer choice D so this is a multi-step problem just be aware that in a lot of cases multi-step problems they will put the answers of the midway point are parts of the problem as answer choices to try to bait you in. So just be very careful about those types of solving equation problems. Okay, so we step up our equations a little bit. This time you see fractions. Now, what I tell my students whenever they're solving equations with fractions is to find a common denominator and multiply the entire equation by that common denominator. What this will do for you is it will clear out the fractions and make the rest of the problem easier to work with. Now, you may finish with a fraction answer, but at least the steps along the way were a little bit easier. So let me show you what I'm talking about. 
Okay, so I know that 3 and 4 have a common denominator of 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 12 to both sides. Now, when I distribute this 12 to both parts, I'm going to get 12 over 3k, and I'm going to get 12 over 4 k is equal to 12. Now if you forgot how to multiply fractions, what we're doing here is this is 12 times 1 third, and this is technically 12 over 1, and so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply numerators and we're going to multiply denominators to get 12 over 3. Now why is this important? Because 12 over 3 is 4, 12 over 4 is 3, and now you can see here that we have a much, much easier problem to work with. Now, you didn't have to write this intermediate equation if you recognize that 12 times 1 third equals to 4, just go straight down to 4k. All right, and if we continue this problem, we get 12 over 7, which we see is answer choice B. So make sure that you know how to clear out fractions when you're solving linear equations. That'll be the easiest way for you to come up with the answer, and notice, we have a couple subsequent steps in here that are not that do not have fractions that make life a lot easier to get to the final answer. Okay, so this problem is kind of a mix between solving equations and translating word problems. So if you went back to the first video in this playlist where we're doing writing equations or translating math problems, I told you that you didn't necessarily have to write out a perfect equation like you would in a textbook. Sometimes you can piece this stuff together without actually writing an equation. So that's the strategy I'm actually going to use in this particular problem. It says Maurice earns twelve fifty an hour for the first 40 hours he works each week. For each hour beyond 40 hours he works in one week, Maurice earns eighteen seventy five per hour. Last week Maurice earned $931.25. How many hours did Maurice work last week? Well look, if I just took the twelve fifty and multiplied it times 40 hours, Maurice is going to earn $500. Now, that's on his first 40 hours. It said in the problem that Maurice earned $931.25 total. So I know that if we subtracted that out, if I subtracted that $500, that means that he had $431 and 25 cents for any hours over 40 that he worked. So what I need to do with that number is I need to divide that by his hourly wage above 40 hours. So I'm going to take 431.25 and divide it by 18.75, which is going to give me 23. And what that tells me is he worked 23 hours at the wage of 18.75, and we know that he worked... 40 hours at the wage of 1250. So if we take the 40 hours and the 23 hours, he worked a total of 63 hours, which we can see is answer choice D. Okay, so if you can see here that I didn't go to the trouble to set up a a perfect textbook equation and with a variable and to try to solve for the variable. I just use common sense and basic mathematics to kind of back my way into this number. And that's perfectly acceptable because I've got the right answer and I've done it the quickest way that I could possibly do it. So if you see a different way to do this, that's perfectly acceptable. Now, one thing I want you to pay attention to is this. Once we have, we basically know this, that at 40 hours a week, at twelve fifty an hour, he earns five hundred dollars. We know that nine hundred and thirty one twenty five he had to have worked more than forty hours. So right off the bat, answer A and B are incorrect. So you could you could obviously get that information very quickly. So those are just some strategies that you can use for process of elimination as well if you couldn't come up with the correct answer in any other way. All right, the last problem, it says we've got basically two equations here. One equation has an x and one equation has a y. And notice they want us to know what x plus y equals to. So this is nothing more than testing you on your ability to solve equations, but they want you to do it twice 
with two simple equations and then combine those two together. So it requires a little bit more time and effort, not necessarily degree of difficulty. So let's do that real quick. So you can see our first equation, x equals to 2 thirds. And you can see in our second equation that y equals to negative 1 half. Now, if we take a look at the answer choices, you can see that they've got 2 thirds as a possible answer choice. They've got negative 1 half as a possible answer choice. And we know that those are bait answers because we actually want to put these together. So we're going to say 2 thirds plus a negative 1 half, which is just basically subtraction. And so now they're testing us on another skill. They're testing us on our ability to add or subtract fractions. So this is a way that the ACT can combine skills into one question. They've tested you not only on solving linear equations, but now they're testing you on the pre-algebra skill of working with fractions. So you definitely want to check out our video that we've done on the most common fraction problems on the ACT as well. So let's take a look. What do we need to do here is we need to get a common denominator, which is 6, and then we have the ability to come up with an answer. And so if we're looking at our answer choices, we can see that 1 sixth and B is our correct answer choice. So just be careful not to fall for those bait answers and uh, make sure that you understand how to do the basic skills because you may be able to solve the equation, but if you don't know how to add fractions, it doesn't really help you. So, all right. The next, uh, the next list, the next video in the playlist is going to be solving inequalities, which is going to use all of the skills of solving equations, but have just a few extra steps involved.